This week has been still pretty cold, but you already know I put out some incredible fragrances, so stay tuned. Hey, what's going on? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, hit that subscribe button down below and also be sure to follow my Instagram page. But that's right, another week, another weekly fragrance rotation. Keeping this series consistent, of course, you guys seem to enjoy them. I enjoy making them. But if this is the first time you are coming across this series, what I do is I tell you what fragrances I chose to wear on each day, how many sprays, the kind of weather, and of course, if we got any compliments or not. So let's not waste any time and get right into Sunday. Sunday was actually in the high 40s and it was nice and sunny out, which was always good. And I actually pulled out a brand new fragrance from Rosa Parfums, which is very expensive, and that is Taif Aoud. Now, Taif is actually a very rare, luxurious rose. And I gotta say, this is one of the most elegant rose oud combos I've ever smelled in my entire life. It also has its very clean, sparkling aldehydes in here, which makes it extremely unique. It's not your traditional rose oud fragrance that you would think when you think of that combination. It definitely has a twist on it. But on that day in the morning, I actually did go to church. I wore this. Uh, I did actually do 10 sprays. Uh, and honestly, people around me were sort of like coughing and stuff like that. I'm not sure if it was because of this fragrance. It might have been, which is always and never good. This stuff is pretty strong. It's not your kind of pungent, dirty, barnyardy oud even though you do get that exotic oud touch in here. But later on in the day, I actually met up with one of my buddies. We went out doing some shopping and fragrance sniffing and stuff like that. We actually hit up Louis Vuitton, of course. He picked up two. I actually picked up one of the Louis Vuittons I've been wanting for a very, very long time. And you'll see that in the next day, of course. But it's always nice getting together with some fellow frag heads because it is fairly rare to come across other people in this hobby. So... Yeah, that was a good time, of course. But Taif Oud, I absolutely love this one. It was a very good wearing experience. And if you're not really a fan of Rose Oud combinations, this is one you might want to check out because it's very different. All right, so on Monday, it was in the low 50s. Also a rainy, kind of gloomy, dark day. And of course, you already knew I put out a Louis Vuitton because this is the fragrance I bought on Sunday. And I'm talking about none other than Ombre Nomad. Of course, this is it within their higher end collection in the black bottles. And right off the bat, guys, I have to say, this is a complete masterpiece when it comes to oud. It has this very fruity kind of raspberry note along with the oud. And rose isn't necessarily listed in this fragrance. It might be there, but trust me, you don't get a burst of rose at all. It's not really a rose oud. It's more of like a fruity oud combination. And of course, it's done absolutely incredible from one of the best perfumers, Jack Cavalier. He just knows how to make works of art when it comes to his fragrances. And this is definitely a masterpiece with extremely high quality. This does not smell synthetic at all. None of the Louis Vuittons actually smell synthetic to me, which is always good. I love more natural fragrances. But yeah, Ombre Nomad is awesome. It's a fruity, oody, smoky fragrance, and it's done to perfection, guys. But on that day to work, I did do eight sprays of Ombre Nomad. Got no compliments, and it's not necessarily the most compliment magnet sort of fragrance of course when you think of oud even though when i got this fragrance it was a blind buy of course um i was expecting it to be a little bit more animalic and barnyardy with the oud because of things i've heard but it's not that necessarily it's just well blended very very smooth so i'm just glad to have this in my collection and that's what i chose to wear on monday for tuesday it was in the low 40s even though it was kind of sunny outside which was good and I actually pulled out a brand new 2023 release, and that is Polo Red Parfum. And if you caught my review, you'll know exactly how I feel about this fragrance. I'm not impressed. I'm not a fan of this by any means, guys. This fragrance is just very weird to me. It comes across like a green fragrance, even though it's in a red bottle. It sort of has identity crisis, and yeah, not a fan of it at all. It just completely is a dud. But on that day, I did do 10 sprays of Polo Red Parfum. Of course, being a parfum, you would expect this to have some kind of longevity. This one, it definitely wears more like an Eau de Toilette, very airy, sort of transparent. It doesn't really have depth or deepness to it, unfortunately. Best part about this is the opening with that blood orange, and that fades extremely quick until you get into this weird absinthe green note, herbal, and that Apopanax funkiness in the dry down. And it, the combination does not go together at all. But 
That's what I chose to wear to work on Tuesday is Polo Red Parfum. So for Wednesday, it was also in the low 40s, kind of a gloomy, cloudy day. And for some reason, I was craving an amber-based fragrance. So I pulled out one of my favorites in that genre, and it's coming from Moss Milano, and this is Tango. This is a very spicy, earthy, warm, resinous amber fragrance, and I love the way this is blended together. With the notes, I think you get like cinnamon, cloves, of course that amber. And when it comes to Moss Milano as a fragrance house, all they do is create art pieces, guys, in their fragrances. Every time I'm smelling one of them, it's just like painting a picture in my head with like Russian tea, Love Kills, of course, Tango. Yeah, these are just works of art, guys. I love this house so much, and I can't wait to try some more from them, but on that day with uh, Tango to work, I did do H sprays of this one, so a little bit less than my usual 10 that I've been rocking because this stuff is very potent. I mean, look how potent that juice looks. Very, very strong fragrance, so you don't want to overspray this one, even though people will think H sprays is overspraying anyways, but for me, yeah, it, that's pretty safe. So yeah, Tango, if you're looking for a golden, warm, kind of earthy amber fragrance, and especially at the price, you cannot go wrong with Tango. So headed into the Thursday, it was in the mid 40s, also cloudy as well. And I pulled out a fragrance I haven't actually worn before and it's coming from Orientica. And this is exclusive Oud Emerald with this beautiful gold and green bottle. I love the way this bottle looks, but this is exactly how it looks. It's a very green, sparkling, clean, soapy, masculine fragrance with phenomenal performance, guys. I have no complaints when it comes to Orientica, when it comes to the performance of their fragrances absolute beast mode fragrances guys so if that's what you're looking for you have to check out this house it is a middle eastern house as well and of course when it does come to middle eastern brands they always create nuclear fragrances and this one is no different was pretty much at work for the majority of the day but after i did actually go and grab some food with my buddy i did actually do h sprays of emerald and this stuff lasted all day long got no compliments but i could definitely see this one being crowd pleasing people will compliment it I'm not sure what this is similar to. I know these aren't a clone house by any means, but a lot of them are similar to others. I know Blue from his lines, very similar to Layton. I know the Sport is similar to Kalan, but I'm not sure what this is similar to. I haven't really smelled anything quite like it, to be honest. Just a great DNA. I would definitely wear this one a lot more, especially like in the springtime. I think this will shine perfectly. So Friday was in the high 30s, sort of like a rainy, snowy weather kind of day. So it was kind of cold outside. And I pulled out another brand new fragrance in my collection from Sospero, and it's Basso. Now, Vibrato is the one that absolutely brought this house on the map for me. I love Vibrato, of course. Basso also really piqued my interest, so I wanted to get this bottle as well. And trust me, it did not disappoint. If you are a fan of Terre Hermes, you'll fall in love with this one because it's so much smoother, way more well-rounded. And honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of Tudor Hermes, but this one I absolutely love and I cannot wait to wear it more. On that day, I actually did do 10 sprays of Basso. I went out to this lobster dinner. The person I was with, Dick Kaufman, I mean, he was like, wow, that smells so good. What is that, of course? And I told him, and so something with these Sospero fragrances, they are huge compliment getters. Vibrato's got me so many compliments. Basso now is getting me compliments as well. Just two great, great fragrances. If you are looking for a very kind of earthy, herbal, green, masculine fragrance, you have to check out Basso. It also has such great performance as well. Easily lasts you all day long. And I cannot wait to get to know this fragrance more and then do, of course, a full review of Basso. But that's what I chose to wear to a lobster dinner on Friday. Wrapping the week off on Saturday was in the mid 30s, so even colder. I think this was the coldest day of the week. Still cloudy and gloomy and dark outside. And I actually did decide to wear a brand new fragrance from a new house I've never even heard of before. So it's a brand new discovery. And it's coming from Music de Parfums, and this is Panissimo. Now, guys, this is a very sweet, fruity, oody fragrance. So you get some orange in here. You get these very coconut kind of uh, suntan lotion top note along with this dirty, slightly dirty oud in the base. It's not necessarily like barnyardy or fecal or animalic or anything like that. Just a slight earthiness with that oud. And I actually love this one, man. I was really, really impressed with this fragrance. And I'm definitely gonna be checking out some more from Music de Parfum because I love their bottles. I love what they kind of do with their music themes and stuff like that. So yeah, this one's good. So I'm sure they also have some great offers as well. 
in their collection. But on that day, I actually did go out shopping again. I had to go to Louis Vuitton because one of the fragrances has been rumored to be getting discontinued, and that's Sir La Root, which I didn't own. So I had to go pick that up before it gets axed, and then it's hard to get, of course. So picked up a bottle of that, and obviously you'll probably hear more about that in the next week of fragrance rotation. I'll probably wear it. But it's not my favorite Louis Vuitton, but it's definitely a very, very good one. But that's what I did. I did do 10 sprays of Panissimo. Got no compliments, but man, I love a good fruity oud. So that's going to do it for my weekly fragrance rotation. As always, let me know down below the fragrances you guys are pulling up for the week. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. And I'll see all of you guys here in my next video. Take care, everybody.